I want to be very clear. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated, because I believe that you must know what I know as president. Here's the PNT overview and priorities. PNT via the line organization continues to work on the final composite. Documents aligning it with Japan's evacuation instruction. Japan team is actively tracking radiation readings and investigating agricultural and marine impacts. Request from Japan's PNT to coordinate review of two documents. Japan regs for emergency preparedness planning and programs for how they compare to the US PAGs. Review comments are requested by Friday of 4.22.11. This is the OUO, official use only. Request from the Japan PMT to evaluate waste container and radionuclides in MOX sludge. Second, look the release source term and access the difference update if required. LT overview and priorities. Mark Scheifner at the IAEA has requested permission to share the NRC site rep with the Chinese government. NOIP was advised this document should not be shared. Concerns with any plan to share the site rep with the Chinese government's R1. U.S. states have been denied access to this document. And two, if we share this document with the Chinese government, this precedent could obligate us to honor requests from other international stakeholders as well. As we learn with the NY Times article, we need to safeguard against leaks of official use only information. Embassy of Japan will send the request matrix out for updating. Work in the Japan site team to determine approximate number of U.S. citizens who live within the 12 to 50 mile radius of the Daiichi nuclear power plant. Working with the EPA to assist in a request from the U.S. Japan Economic Strategy Institute in Tokyo to help them attain acceptable shipping containers for radioactive materials. Below is from the NRC FOIA documents. Roger Witherspoon and the case of the puzzling press release part one. Here's the subject line. Revise. NRC sees no radiation at harmful levels reaching the U.S. from the damaged nuclear reactors. Good morning, folks. This press release is, to put it mildly, puzzling for starters. One. What's it based on? Two. What do you know about releases from the Japanese reactors? Three. What modeling have you done? And four. How can you be certain that in the event of a complete meltdown and exothermic fire, nothing harmful will arrive here? And five, who at the NRC made the decision that the spreading of radiation is and will be harmless? From the NRC FOIA documents, Roger Witherspoon in the case of the puzzling press release part two. Only Elliot. While we know more than what they say, we're sticking to the story for now. Brenner can deflect the hard-nosed inquiries of Roger Witherspoon. The subject line is the revised NRC sees no radiation at harmful levels reaching U.S. from damaged fuel reactors. Attention to all, if Witherspoon calls, and I have no doubt he will, the response is, Elliot will be responding to you. No expected time. Do not get into a discussion with him. Thanks, Scott. This is Casto on the protective measures. I think the ambassador is getting most, a lot of information from the DOE and the AMS. And they meet when we meeting. That's the meeting I just came back from. So it was. It would be helpful if we work with the DOE and come up with a consolidated viewpoint. And that has been, you know, the DOE. They had information at the meeting that I didn't have. And I... I would prefer the two teams work together to come up with a single so that we know what the DOE is going to provide them every morning. Virgilio? Alright. So are you guys... 
Just for your awareness, Tony just handed me this a couple of articles from the Wall Street Journal. It's amazing how people know this staff and we can't seem to get it, but it is what it is. U.S. Ambassador in Japan Request for a forward-looking pessimistic scenario calculation. PMT has discussed with the DOE and IT and with NARAC. Request has been forwarded to the White House to gain alignment prior to moving forward. Which means we will come together with one voice with a pessimistic scenario. Source term will be developed with the RES staff to more accurately reflect changes for DK and events since the beginning of the event. Continued review of the DOE measurements, aerial and ground base and areas around site shows downward trend in exposures. The IAEA has reported iodine-131 and CCM-137 levels in soil samples 40 kilometers northwest of Fukushima, which exceeds the IAEA operational criteria for evacuation. IAEA reports Japan is assessing these results. Below is from the NRC FOIA documents, Part 1. The next screen capture is part one of a three-part series. In this first segment, there is a discussion taking place about information that has leaked and it's made its way to the Wall Street Journal. When Larry Camper says, it's amazing how people know this staff and we can't seem to get it, he is referring to whoever leaked the information and the fact they should have known better. Sounds like the staff does not have our best interest at heart. Larry Camper, just for your awareness, Tony just handed me a couple of articles from the Wall Street Journal. It's amazing how people know this staff. We can't seem to get it. But it is what it is. But it says that one spinach sample collected in the city of Hadachinyaka, located about 120 kilometers south of the plant, contained 8,420 becquerels per kilogram of iodine-131. According to the health administrator, the normal amount set by Japan law is 2,000 becquerels per kilogram. So roughly a factor of four over times the legal limit. And as you know, they continued to leave the evacuation zone only about 40 kilometers or so. And this is 120 kilometers south. Blows from the NRC FOIA documents part two. Note the term consolidated input. And then in a separate article, it talks about it in raw samples implying more than one from a farm in a town of Kawamata in the Fukushima prefecture up to 1510 becquerels per kilogram of iodine-131 has been detected about five times the limit of 300 becquerels per kilogram set by law so I moniker what I think is maybe you can have Jack Foster call the PMT to run through all this stuff Casto yeah, I mean, the preferable method I tried to establish the other day was to get Jack Foster, the PMT, and the Department of Energy together and provide a consolidated input and, you know, PowerPoint briefing ready for the ambassador. From the NRC FOIA documents, part three, note the term consolidated input. They want to be sure they are all giving the ambassador the same story. Whatever the story was, it was much less alarming picture of reality. So much less alarming that the ambassador felt he needed to request a pessimistic scenario. DOE goes in there every day with a PowerPoint and you know, it's not always like I'm armed with the same information. So we got to get on the same page. We got to get with those groups. These three groups working together, make sure we all have the same story, aka consolidated input. From the NRC FOIA documents, this email explains that there is one official plume model provided and everyone is to refer to that. Please note that in my article included in this complete work, Seek and Destroy, shows where the NRC cybersecurity team has several leaked plume models pulled from online. Because there is important to be a confirmed discharge from Fukushima, I regardless of whether it turns out to be a significant discharge or not, something may well begin to happen is that these various governments and non-government agencies around the world are going to start producing and distributing plume models. This is a map that describes where the radiation plume is going to travel. There will probably be a lot of variation in these maps and sometimes it takes some amount of experience to understand them. If there is any need to draw some conclusion about the plume, I suggest that you rely exclusively on the NRC 
and DOE plume model distribution of the International Atomic Agency documents. Say three missing cores in America and the sheep will say where the beer went. From the NRC FOI documents, the NRC and other agencies withheld information on plume models. Also from the U.S. states, even though they made the claim that they did not expect harmful levels of radiation samples in the U.S. Samples from the U.S. were withheld from the states on conference calls. Providing you with the knowledge to land yourself in an extremely uncomfortable conversation. Subscribe to our channel so our latest clips always come directly to you. Also, check out our playlist and be sure to like and share our videos with your friends. So have fun and thank you for spreading the love.